Okay, so I trust everybody's doing really well. Getting into today's video, it is all about tapering for the marathon. You can make this relevant to 10K half marathon, 5K, I'll make it relevant. But what I'm saying is it's not just about marathon, it's really about tapering into that big important race. And in this scenario, we'll talk about the marathon, but what to do, what not to do, what to look out for, things to avoid, and then the crucial importance of what I like to think of is don't fall asleep. And so a bit of context, I'm up the mountain in Font Rameau. You know, today is probably not the nicest day we've had, but I've been super lucky with weather. And this is week five up at altitude. I'm up at altitude because that really helps prepare physiologically, psychologically, and just work really hard for four to five weeks with maximum focus on running, less distractions, and just get as fit as you possibly can to increase your chances of winning. Now, if you do all that hard work, but you make a mess of your final taper into the marathon, you can end up with a very poor reflection on race day of all that hard work. The taper, I'm gonna say it's the most important part, but of course it's not the most important part because you have to do all the training, you have to get all the work done, but without a very successful taper, it's very difficult to get a big result on race day. And so let's break it up into why it's so important, what we're looking to achieve, what you want to do, what you shouldn't be doing, and things to kind of avoid. So importance, what you should be doing, try not to do X, Y, and Z. Today I'm actually doing a hill session. I'm doing a hill session because that kind of filters into the psychological part of all this and a little bit physical because it's still important to work on what's known as power, neuromuscular power coming up to the marathon. But the psychological aspect is what tends to happen in those final 10 to 14 days is you start reading into everything. You start reading into your heart rate, you start reading into your splits, and the weather was hideous today. So the best thing that I could possibly do was take myself to a hill instead of the track, run at a location that I have no clue what is fast, what's good, what's not good, and just work hard. Important to work hard to remind the body that, hey, we have a job to do, running's hard work, don't fall asleep, but also important to not overanalyze the little details of, oh my goodness, my heart rate is normally X, Y, and Z at this speed. Why is it higher? Why am I not able to run marathon effort without it feeling easy? I try to avoid all of that nonsense in the final two weeks, just to give my brain a little bit of a relaxation leading into the race. And so the importance of the taper is to really get your psychology, your body physically in a state ready to race. It's, it's, it's very, very important because this is your final opportunity to maybe get rid of little injuries or niggles that you've had, super, super important. And so that means if you need to do a little bit of cross training instead of running, if you need to see the physio, if you need to get massage, if you need to do a bit more stretching, foam rolling, this is the most important time to get that done, especially day seven to 14, because I like to leave the body alone race week and not spend all this time on the foam roller, not spend all this time on the massage table, because that can make your muscles a bit soft literally soft and not tense and not ready. If you get rid of all that muscle tension, that's why on race day you feel pretty crap. The next thing that I think is super important is when you're doing your taper, remember that taper kind of works in a way where it's, if I've trained a lot for, you know, five weeks, six weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, well, it's likely that you're a bit tired. And so what you want to do is freshen up to allow all that training to be delivered on race day. So it equals training, which is your fitness, all this training you've done, plus how fresh you are equals race result. The problem is if you've missed little bits of training, if you haven't been able to do the full program, whether it's been because of injury, maybe it's laziness, doesn't matter. 
well then that will dictate how long your taper would be. I do enough to help my body get a little bit fresher from probably about 10 days to go, which is right around now. When it comes to taper, you've got frequency of training, which is if you run seven times a week, well then that's seven per week. You've got volume, which is if you run 50 miles a week, 80 miles a week, 100 miles a week, that's your volume. Or if you think of it as minutes, 50 mile plus one hour of cross training plus two times gym at one hour, well then you've got time per week, okay? But that's still volume. Then you've got probably the most important part, which is intensity. Now, the mistake most people make is it gets the two weeks to go, and what you start to do is you decrease all of that, right? So frequency changes, whereby you don't train seven times a week, you train four. Volume changes because you do much less running because you've obviously only ran four times. You didn't increase the volume of those runs, so volume comes down. And I think the mistake that a lot of people are making is they're getting rid of intensity, okay? So it gets the two weeks to go, You've went through this period of hard training where you would show up to your track, the road loop, the long run. You were willing to work, you were willing to push. You got your brain and psycho psychology in a place that it probably was starting to enjoy working hard and pushing. And then with two weeks to go, you shut everything down and suddenly you wonder why it's all feeling like hard work. And I genuinely believe that the, the psychology, the brain, Honestly, within a space of probably three, four days, it can almost get lazy to hard work. So I go to the hill, I work really hard up the hill, but I take away volume from other places. So that's the area that I'll taper. So I'll taper off volume. Instead of running 100 mile a week, 110 mile a week, I'm gonna run 70, 80. I have a full rest day. But when it comes to the actual sessions, when it comes to picking which session to do, when it comes to actually executing the session, I probably go harder in, in sort of day seven to 14. I don't go longer and I don't like train, you know, twice a day or I don't change the frequency. But when it comes to intensity, I'm a big fan of just reminding the psychology, hey, we're ready, we can do this, we like doing this. So, in, in today's situation with the hills, what I would do is I, I would push the hill in little stages, and as it started to get tough, I would remember my breathing, big exhales, get the air in, calm everything down, but work, push, really push. And then when it got to the final few, I decided to try to get, instead of like conceding or thinking, right, the work's kind of done, in that final set or two, I was trying to get further than I'd been getting previously showing myself you can do more, you can work harder, you can go beyond you know, that like, oh, I think this is my limit. You can push past that limit. So when you're doing your training, don't do it to the extent of you getting injured, because that's not what you want. But if you're doing something like hills, well then remember you can push up those hills and, and kind of do it freely because it's less pounding on the body, but it really hurts the breathing and, and the psychology will love it. But play with it, test it. If you do find yourself getting uncomfortable or a bit anxious, remember to breathe, big deep breaths, calm it down, try again. But remind yourself to keep that intensity in place in the taper. So with seven days to go, that's when I do back off. That's when I realize that kid, anything that you're doing now is probably gonna take away from the race. So that's where I take away a bit of the intensity as well, because I don't think in the final seven days you can gain anything, we know that. So you can relax off a bit, but when it comes to doing the little things, like maybe still some gym stuff, I, I still go to the gym, I still do the stretching, because I think psychologically you can fall apart a little bit in that final week, if all you're doing is a couple of easy runs, spending a lot of time in your own head, a lot of time around the house, you end up probably overeating, overthinking, and that's not what you need either. So try to keep your routine similar. If you go to the track on a Tuesday, go to the track on the Tuesday. Show up with your club, do the warm up, do little bits of the session, go home. Don't overcomplicate it, don't overstretch, don't get too much massage, don't get too much physio, or what tends to happen 
is the body gets that, like I said, those soft muscles, the, it's the muscle tension. In heavy training, your muscles are under a good amount of tension, they're stiff, but that makes them elastic and able to be quick. The other thing to be weary of is if you do wear things like trackables, Whoop, or uh, even your Garmin, Polar, whatever smartwatch you have, your rest and heart rate might come up, your, your, your heart rate on runs might come up, and that's because you've actually been in a period of tiredness, and when you're in that period of tiredness, everything is suppressed. So now that you've came out of that period of tiredness with this taper, what's gonna happen is the heart rate's gonna come up a little bit, which is actually a good thing, because it gives you more like power on race day in terms of how much of your heart rate you can use, how hard you can push it, how high you can get it, where when it's suppressed, it's not actually the best thing. So today went really good. You know, I, I did those hills really well. I, I personally love hills. I, I think leading into the marathon, people can get a little bit sluggish, a little bit slow. They neglect the sort of VO2 work. They neglect, it's not that hills are speed, but you're, you're pushing and you're running fast and you're driving the arms and pumping the legs. It means that when the gun goes on marathon race day, I feel like then the pace feels really comfortable, really easy. When you've pushed up a hill as hard as you can for 90 seconds, the effort on race day feels easy because it's kind of like in the last 10 days, how hard have you pushed yourself? And that means that, you know, if I ran from the bottom of the hill today to the top of the ski slope as hard as I could, that's a 10. But I was still probably at 7.5, eight in the 90 second hill. But if all you've done in the final four, 10 to 14 days is like three times a mile, five times a mile at marathon effort, you might be looking at that being like a three or four out of 10 in terms of how hard you could really push yourself. And so when the gun goes, don't expect it to feel easy psychologically if all you've been doing is jogging and running slow. So take a lot of these things on board. When it comes to doing your gym, still do your activation stuff, still do your little routines that keeps the body healthy. If you need more advice on that, go to the website joggingroom.com. That's all the gym stuff, the nutrition stuff surrounding marathon. There is a bit more on tapering. There's a big, big lecture on the hard and soft muscles, which is all about muscle tension and why sometimes likely when the gun has gone in a race, you felt garbage because your muscles were probably in a soft state and not a medium to hard state. So start to understand muscle tension. Heaps of advice on the website. Be kind to yourself in the taper. Don't start with the negativity of what I haven't got done. Start to remind yourself of all the hard work you did get done, some of the sacrifices you made, the commitment that you've made, the discipline that you've shown, and back yourself. Really start to believe in yourself. I think you should make a race plan with seven days to go. I think you should make a week plan with seven days to go to help yourself through the week so you don't forget things, working on that hydration, the nutrition, plan it, your carb loading strategy, get it all planned, get it all on paper, and don't get it wrong because you start to let emotions of race week fuck with your head. Enjoy it, check out the website if you like, training plans on there, lots of tips, tutorials, video guidance, subscribe to the channel, do all those lovely things, like, subscribe, comment below if you enjoyed that, comment below if you have a marathon coming up or another race coming up, you think this was helpful, and just be nice to yourself, and take care.